One of the things that you want to look for on your soil test this fall is your base saturation test. Specifically today, we're going to talk about the nutrient calcium. Usually we say 65 to 80% calcium, but Darren and I are debating a little bit on the top end. We do know on the bottom end, we want to be at least 65% calcium. Here's one of the big reasons why. With calcium, it's a large molecule. You've got to have a lot of that in your soil so you have good porosity. Magnesium is the other one that is very predominant in most soils. Well, magnesium is very, very small. If you have a whole bunch of these little small molecules there, there isn't enough air space, there isn't the pore space. You're going to find you have poor drainage, you have compaction issues. You just don't have good root growth, you don't have a healthy soil because there's not enough oxygen in there. And that's really going to hurt your yields. Now this is more of a long-term play than anything. It's not like, oh, if I get my calcium and magnesium in the right balance, next year my yields are going to double. No, probably not going to happen. But over time, you're going to find that the soil is a lot healthier and everything is going to get substantially better over a few years. Brian mentioned that he and I are kind of debating about exactly where we want to be with our calcium base saturation percentage. The important thing to remember is base saturation has five nutrients in it, and when you add up those percentages, it's going to add up to 100. So if you say, well, if calcium's so good, Brian's just got me convinced I got to have more calcium out there. Well, you don't want to get up to 90% calcium because now you have only 10% left for all these other four nutrients. Well, that's not enough. So when we're talking about base saturation, it's always in a range. We want to see a range. Maybe it's 65% to 75%. Maybe it could be a little bit stronger on calcium too, but you have to leave room for the other nutrients as well. The other thing we haven't really focused on is why is calcium even important in the plant? Well, look, it serves a lot of different functions in the plant, but today I really wanted to focus on, well, how am I going to increase my level in the soil if let's say I'm only at 50%? I guess the first thing that I'm going to look at is why am I only at 50%? Am I there because my magnesium is ridiculously high or am I there because my hydrogen is ridiculously high? It's usually one or the other. If your hydrogen is way high, that means you have a very acid soil and lime is going to correct that. So just make sure you're getting the right lime recommendation to raise pH. If your magnesium is really high, then you probably want to start with a little bit of lime and then add some gypsum. So it all depends on where your other nutrients are at in terms of what source of calcium I'm going to get. Now, when you're looking at calcium sources, the finer the particle size, the quicker you're going to get an impact out of that calcium. So if you've got a low pH, find a lime source with very fine particles. You're going to move the needle quickly and get that calcium into your plants as well. The next question is, what if you have too much calcium? Let's say you're at 90% calcium. That's too much. We know that because I really want my potassium in the 4 to 8% range. I probably want my magnesium at least 12%. Plus, I really want the soil pH less than 7 in the range of 6.3 to 6.8, so my hydrogen needs to be 2 to 10%. So what I'm trying to say is at the very, very most, we want calcium at 80%. So if your calcium is at 90, this isn't going to be a quick fix or anything like that, but over time, we've got to look at how do I get more of those other nutrients out in that soil. I'm going to focus on things like, hey, I just need more potassium, I'll put that out. If I need more magnesium, I'll put some of that out. And if I want to try to drop my pH down, I have to make sure my drainage is fixed first, and then I'm going to look at elemental sulfur. Well, this is an interesting discussion today because you're probably thinking, well, I'm looking at my soils and I wasn't even thinking about putting calcium out there. I was thinking about N, P, and K. Maybe I was thinking about sulfur or a micronutrient. We just want you to start at the top. Calcium, when you look at your soil test in parts per million, chances are it's going to be the highest number that you see on the page, and it probably should be. Calcium is really important for getting all the other nutrients into our crop. We've got to start here and manage that calcium. We look at the base saturation test to help us with what the balance of calcium is in our soil, and we suggest that you look at it as well. Well, whether you have high calcium or low calcium, you can still have our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up later in the show.